This tutorial is brought to you by Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh Inobakure and welcome to Olufemi Tutorials. Now we're going to discuss ISO. ISO is the third pillar of exposure. If you remember, there are three pillars of exposure. All three of these ex pillars of exposure determine how bright or how dark your footage is going to be. You need to use all three of these pillars of exposure to get to perfect exposure, meaning your footage is neither too bright or too dark. ISO is referring to the sensitivity of your sensor. The more sensitive your sensor is to light, the brighter the footage is gonna be, the less sensitive your sensor is to light, the darker your footage is gonna be. ISO is measured in ISO numbers. A really low ISO number would be, say, 100. A really high ISO number would be something like, say, 1600. Now here's the catch. You may say, okay, this is cool. So say I'm in a really low light environment, say I'm filming some concert in some dark auditorium, I'm going to bump my ISO up as high as it can go. I want my, my sensor to be as sensitive to light as it can. I want to bump my, IS, my ISO, say to say, let's say 1600. Well, the issue with ISO is that it too has a side effect. Not only does it, no, not only does an ISO number determine how bright or, or how dark an image is, it also determines the amount of noise that's in your footage. Noise is not good. An example of a piece of footage that has too much noise in it is say this, compared to this, which has a normal amount of noise in it. So the higher amount that your ISO is cranked up means that the higher amount of noise you're gonna have in your footage. So you wanna have your ISO as low as possible. If you can um, get your ISO, to, if you can set your ISO to 100, which I think is the lowest for most cameras, um, then you're good. You're gonna have perfect footage. Your footage is gonna look perfect. There are situations though where you do need to bump your ISO up because you are in a low light environment and there's no way that you can, you may be in a place where you know you can't, you've already opened up your aperture as wide as it can go and you've already slowed down your shutter speed to as slow as you can go in order to uh, get as much light to your sensor as possible. So the only other option would be to bump your ISO number up. So how high can you go is the question as far as your ISO number. Well, it depends on the type of sensor or camera that you have. For most um, DSLR users, the highest ISO that you wanna go is around 800 ISO. This would be a suggested amount for say the the Canon Rebel line. Um, if you have, say, a, a Canon 5D Mark III, which is a little bit more expensive of a, of a camera, you have the option of bumping your ISO up a little bit more, not that much, but a little bit more over 800, and you still should have adequate looking footage. Um, if you shoot with something like a RED camera that shoots RAW, um, uh, it has a, a different type of sensor. It's able to get you better quality footage um, at a higher ISO. The uh, Sony a7S is a really popular camera. Um, it's another DSLR that Sony made um, and it is known for its ability to capture great quality footage at really high ISO. So it's a camera that's really great in low light. It's, it's really funny. I've run into professional camera operators that really have no idea how to effectively use ISO. They just bump it crazy high in dark environments say they use a 1600 or 2000 iso just because it's a really dark room and they're like hey you know um iso makes it brighter so i'm gonna bump up the iso um it's important to know how much higher iso affects the noise le level a really high noise level is going to completely mess up and screw up the quality of your footage it's very important to know that you it, it would, it's the, in my opinion, uh, it's a lot better to have darker footage than footage that has a lot of noise in it. 
because with darker footage, you know, in post, in post production, as far as when you're editing, you can tweak some stuff. If your footage is already full of noise, there isn't much you can do as far as um, bringing back that quality in your footage. If you missed any of our other three videos regarding the three pillars of exposure, make sure to check them out. Make sure to check out this next video talking about shutter speed and how it affects exposure.